a very good afternoon to all of you so let's start today's video the video is about the working of a square wave half bridge inverter while feeding a an rl load okay so far and uh, the discussion is very crucial because just by the mere understanding of this rl load we can easily understand the operations of an inverter so let's have a look at the basic inverter circuit it consists of one voltage source another voltage source having magnitude vdc by 2 vdc by 2 the switches are s1 and s2 having anti parallel diode d1 and d2 across the switches and this is the load that is the rl load now straight away coming to the waveforms what will be the waveforms as we can easily observe that when the switch s1 is closed then vdc will get connected across this load terminals so obviously the voltage across the load terminals will be vdc by 2 till till the time period t by 2 after t by 2 obviously s2 will be connected and s1 will be disconnected so the voltage across the load terminals will be a minus vdc by 2 this can be easily observed from the waveforms now as the output waveform of square wave inverter is visible we can also plot the fundamental voltage the fundamental voltage component can also be plotted and that will be a sine wave a perfect sine wave traveling in the entire t period now let's come to the most important part that is the i not t the output current how this output current will vary what it will be the waveform of this output current so before going into the details of this current i would like all of you to kindly go back to the basics of circuit analysis and circuit theory you can easily recall that when an r load is connected when an r load is connected across the vdc then the current will follow an exponential waveform the shape of the current will be an exponential graph now this exponential graph will have a positive component okay and then a negative component okay now coming back to this the second part of this waveform which is having again an exponential waveform okay comprising of a positive part and a negative part now as we uh, are well aware or i can say that we are quite familiar that the current in an rl load will lag the voltage that is for sure yes the current across the load will lag the voltage by a specific angle phi that specific angle phi is marked here in the waveform okay so as the current is lagging thus we can easily comment about the operation of switch components whether the switch will conduct or the diode will conduct or uh, or we can say straight away that depending upon depending upon the values of output voltage and output current we can comment that which of the devices will be conducting so let's have a look at this when the voltage is positive that is in this part in this part when the voltage is positive then you can easily sense that the current is negative positive voltage current negative so till phi d1 will conduct i think this is quite clear till phi d1 will conduct now come to this other part phi to pi from phi to pi we can easily say that voltage is positive and the current is also positive it means 
the positive voltage is getting applied across the load and the current is flowing through the switch into the load okay now when we are saying that the current is flowing into the load then we can straight away comment what comment can we or what conclusion can be drawn that s1 will be conducting okay after the pi duration or after the t by 2 duration it can be easily observed that the current is again positive but the voltage waveform has changed its its wave shape the voltage waveform has become had become minus vdc by 2 so now look at this the voltage is negative the voltage is negative the current is positive negative voltage current positive it means this plus will be applied here but the current will be flowing into that load into the load so out of this s2 and d2 it is quite easy for all of us to comment that d2 will be conducting so d2 will be conducting and the current will be entering the load side from this d2 side i think this is quite easy that the current will be entering the load side through the d2 part so we can easily conclude that from phi from pi to pi plus phi d2 will be conducting and now coming to the other segment of the waveform the load current waveform that is between phi plus pi to 2 pi or we can say the time duration corresponding to the phase angle phi plus phi to 2 pi by omega we can see that the voltage as well as the current both are negative as both are negative then we can comment for sure that s2 will be conducting okay i think this is quite clear till this part now there's an equation that i have written just for recalling the memory of the students that il infinity plus il0 minus il infinity will be the governing equation of this line this line will be governed by this equation i think this is quite clear tau equals to l by r will be the time constant in this case now i am moving on to the next part that is yes the waveforms part now you can easily conclude from this part conduction angle of diode so before moving to the conduction angle of diode i would like to shed some light on the yes this part this thing have a look at this part the voltage output v not t will be given by 2 vdc by n pi sin n omega not t and it will comprising of only odd harmonics the odd harmonics will be present that will be 1 3 5 to infinity and this is a very well familiar expression for all of us all the power trans engineers now coming to the i not t that is the output current we can easily comment that n is varying from 1 to infinity and the output current will be 2 vdc by n pi upon zn zn will be having its value and that will be concluding now coming back to sin n omega not t minus phi the phi represents to the phase lag given due to the r and l and this phi is the inverse omega l by r now let's have a look at this waveform again it is very important for us to draw the fundamental current the fundamental load current the fundamental load current will be a sinusoid it will be a sinusoid that will varying from phi to pi plus phi yes you can see from this waveform easy easily that its zero crossing is coinciding with the zero crossing of exponential graph okay the peak of this wave will reside at pi by 2 plus phi yes again the zero crossing will be pi plus phi now if somebody asks us that what will be the fundamental displacement factor that is displayed here fdf equals to cos phi we can straight away come to this part i can easily observe that this the upper one upper sine curve is the fundamental voltage and the lower curve 
is the fundamental current and it is it can be easily concluded that it is lagging the former by an angle of phi so we can easily comment that the fundamental displacement factor is cos of phi more about this will be covered in the next class thank you